Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about evidence-based practice in nursing. Um, evidence-based practice is based on empirical data, so it means that there were studies performed or we have an expert opinion. There are um, many different ways that we come across evidence-based studies and get the data, so we're going to talk about some today. We're going to talk about um, how we implement it in our nursing practice. On slide one here, we're going to talk about the goals and objectives. The goal for this is for the pre-licensure nursing students to integrate evidence practice into their patient care. We have three objectives, a developmental, a cognitive, and a psychomotor, and the effective. Um, the psychomotor is to demonstrate the steps of evidence-based practice used in direct patient care. Cognitive is to identify the three advantages of evidence-based practice. And the effective is to discuss the value of using evidence-based practice in clinical nursing practice. Brief introduction. Um, so evidence-based practice is a problem-solving type of strategy. Um, we use that uh, because it's well-designed in our studies, and that's what we use to make clinical decisions about our patients' cares. Patients' values and preferences are also used to make these clinical decisions. Evidence-based practices are categorized into level A, B, and C in a hierarchy of which ones are the best to use in our practice, and we'll go over more of that later. Current and up-to-date practice is pivotal. It's an important part that we're using the best practices with the newest research at all times. So level A analysis is going to be a randomly selected data. Um, it's the most reliable. These are studies, meta-analyses, things of that nature. Um, it's literary research and appraisals. Um, level B is less strong. The subjects are not random in this. So even though you may have a study, um, there are some predetermining factors that make it where the data is not as strong. Level C is going to be agreement about the practices, but it's a professional opinion or based on expert knowledge. But there may not necessarily be any empirical data to back it up, except for the practice of those providers. But there's not necessarily any new data coming from studies. And a multi-level is where we mix more than one level of study. In the 1970s, the importance of the studies and testing healthcare strategies became important. In the 90s, we saw a paradigm shift occur with an emphasis on intuition. So at that point, it was kind of up to the doctors and nurses to see how they felt about a patient, use their experience, and you know, if they had some sort of precognition about what they thought they should do for the patient, that was considered best practice. There's a shift in the late 90s to where research evidence and clinical experience with expertise recognized were recognized as the pillars of decision. So we moved away from that cognitive aspect with intuition and what the doctor really wanted to do. And in the 2000s, we see a transdisciplinary model where several disciplines are brought in, the patient values are important, based more so on study, and we're looking for the best pieces to put together our clinical practice. So this helps you kind of see the progression and history of our evidence-based practice. Clinical applications, um, we first of all have to be adaptable in our nursing practice. We want to be using the current data, the current literature. A nurse has to be open to dynamicity and, and changes happening in the nursing field. Um, we uh, change our goals to find a way for the um, patients to have um, different goals for each one. We meet and overcome challenges. As we meet certain goals, we might want to progress to a more complex goal, and that's always going to be worked out with the patient and the multidisciplinary team. We do continued education, the nurses, to um, promote education from within, and um, review of literature is always the most current literature. Chart reviews and performance evaluations make sure that the nurses are employing the proper practices, and we have governing bodies that will help kind of look over that and make sure that we're carrying out the appropriate actions for the disease process. The advantages um, show that we have the best patient outcomes, so evidence-based practice is going to be the new gold standard. It individualizes the care of the patients. Um, the methods of care would be like the best available, so therefore you have the newest studies, the newest evidence. It's adaptable, allows for growth. Once the nurse understands what the disease process is, it helps give the nurse confidence, and that's gonna build a relationship with the patient once the patient understands that the nurse is a, a credible source. Some of the disadvantages is that, of course, our studies can suffer from human error. So although we conduct the studies, there is a margin where the data may not be appropriate or some human error exists or it may not be a truly randomized sample. And of course we have biases in some of these as well. Um, 
staff might give pushback if they're used to using intuition or we're also going to have a culture of the sometimes nurses saying this is the way we've always done it that's inappropriate and so overcoming that might be a challenge for the nurse educator it is also a very lengthy process to implement design and approve evidence-based practices to be the gold standard of data many samples have to be run many research variables have to be introduced and it has to happen over the course of time um, so there are different levels of how we come across the evidence-based research. First of all, there's the research design, then we wait for the results, and then do comparative samples. So it is a process as well. The role of the nurse is that the nurse needs to continue to support um, learning and to hold their colleagues accountable. Um, the nurse answers any question that the patient has, and the nurse is to provide excellent patient care for the patients using best practices and the newest data. And the biggest thing that everyone needs to remember is to remain adaptable. Um, the nursing practice is going to change. At sometimes it changes even daily. So when you're met with those new challenges, if they're if empirical data, they're based on evidence-based practice, we're going to understand that those are the goals we want to reach to provide the best care for the patients. So being adaptable is the number one aspect we need to understand. The role of the nurse leader will be to hold skills fairs, CEUs, um, continuing education, uh, promote skills fairs. We need to always make sure that the nurses have the tools they need to use in order to promote best practices and, and have all the data they need. Some of the strategies we have are the hospitals um, and the resources we have are the hospital's online library, peer-reviewed research, hospital policies and operating procedures. You can always ask your nurse manager, nurse innovation specialist, clinical nurse leader, clinical nurse specialist, the people in your advanced practice role are going to be key for you all as pre-licensure students. Once you graduate and get out there in the work field, you're going to learn the, the players they are in those key roles that can help you. All right, let's talk about some questions. The questions I want you to think about is how can we employ evidence-based practice in our daily responsibilities? And with the future of evidence-based practice, um, how does it make you feel? Do we feel confident about the future? And would you be comfortable seeking help if you have questions about best practices? Um, does anyone have any insight about whether you feel comfortable um, asking anyone about help with best practices? Everyone feel comfortable that you, once you find out your resources, you up great, okay. Anyone have any questions for me about this so far? One more thing I want to do is some role play, and this might really drive it home. Um, I have a couple of scenarios. Um, does anyone want to volunteer to come do role play number one? Oh, yes, I do. All right, Jeff. So I'll play the role of another nurse, and you're a new graduate nurse. So if I call and say, hey, can you help me lift this patient in the bed? I don't want to use the lift equipment. That takes too long. Just help me pull them up real quick. Well, you know, I did a research project in school, and the number one cause of nurse injury is back injuries due to patient transfers. So we really should use the lift equipment Great, that's provided. Excellent. Jeff did a great job of explaining why he wants to use the evidence-based practice and how it can prevent injuries so there's a benefit to the nurse. Thank you, Jeff. Can I have someone volunteer for role play number two? Ashley. Okay. So if I'm a patient and I come into the clinic and I say, I don't want to get that flu shot. I'm not allergic to eggs or anything. There's no reason I can't take it. But one of my friends took the flu shot last year and she said it gave her the flu. I would say to the patient, I understand the misconception that you would feel ill after receiving a flu shot, but it is not inoculated with a live virus to give you the flu. You may experience a little mild fever chills with it, but it's much better to be protected during flu season than to be unprotected. Great example, Ashley. Ashley used patient education, built a rapport with her patient, gave data and encouraged the patient to carry out best practices as well. So this is something we can really invite our patients into. Um, can I get someone to do role play number three? Sure. Okay, so we have Crystal. Okay, so I'm playing the role of a physician. So Crystal, as a newer nurse, I'm going to approach her and say, just go ahead and give that ketamine IM. We don't need to worry about starting an IV first. Well, I'm sure ketamine um, acts as a sedative, so it's very important that we have a lifeline in place before we give this. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to start an IV first. Excellent. So Crystal explained to the physician the best practice, why she doesn't want to employ that tool at that time, 
the risk associated with it and can really help to gain support and build synergy with the physician. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up at this time. I'm gonna have printouts of the slides. So we've done the PowerPoint, role play, slides, and I'm gonna have the handouts. Any other questions? All right, thanks everyone for coming in today.